Straw Hut Media. Welcome to Ask Me Anything, a beacon of spiritual exploration hosted by celebrated mediums Kelly White and James Van Praat. From the mysteries of astrological aspects to the depths of personal growth, no topic is off limits. Your questions light the path as we navigate the intricacies of our spiritual existence together. So, are you ready to delve deeper? Hi, everybody. I'm spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. And welcome to Ask Me Anything. How's everybody doing? I wanted just to mention something kind of interesting. And I don't know if anybody else has had this experience with their dogs, but we're in the middle of a big remodel, as I've talked to a lot of people about. And our dogs, we have two dogs, Otis and Charlotte. And Charlotte understands everything immediately. So when there's been a change in the house, like every single day, you know, there's a change. We can only walk in this way or we can only walk in this way or we have to kind of do the shuffle around to get into a certain area because of all the work that's going on. And she can follow it like this. I mean, this dog, she's half um, English Spaniel and half um, standard poodle. Really, really smart. And then we have Otis. And Otis is a Briard, and he's very set in his ways and really stubborn and set in his ways is the best way I can say it. And Otis cannot figure out how to get from here to here. And he freezes and he won't budge. It's the damnedest thing. And Charlotte will show him. She'll show him several times. And finally he'll, or Don will come out and show him, come on, we're going to go this way, Otis. And just never seen a dog look quite like that, where he literally is just like frozen. And um, I was just curious if anybody else has had that experience with their dogs when they're in the middle of a remodel. Curious about that. So let's talk about the astrology for what's going on. And there's a lot going on. I mean, I've been talking about this for a long time. And the next couple of weeks are, as I said earlier, at some point I was talking about crisis points. And they're still continuing. They're still very intense. We actually have three planets in Scorpio right now in ve using Vedic astrology. So the sun today transits into Scorpio. Okay, And Scorpio is ruled by Mars. Mars is the planet of war. And this is a very um, intense uh, sign right now during this period of time because this this particular sun represents uh, power and authority and confidence, and it also represents leaders. So because the sun represents leaders, and so it, it makes me wonder if things happen to leaders um, in, around the world during this particular time. So the sun goes into Scorpio. Also, Mars goes into Scorpio. And what that does, again, Mars is, is a major planet also. It's the potential to feel courageous and strong and strong-willed and determined. And that's a positive, okay? And also, it brings out like this warrior nature. And this can be like, um, it, it could lead to jealousy. It could lead to agitation. It could lead to, you know, being very proud and arrogant. So, you know, you always want to watch um, self-discipline during this time and loving kindness to one another. You always want to try to remember that. And tomorrow, Mars, the planet of, of war, conjuncts the sun in Scorpio. And a conjunction is when two planets are really close to each other and they amplify that influence of those two planets. So the amplification would be of the sun amplifying Mars, actually. So we could have some major events in the world in the next few days. And then Saturn and Mars square each other. And a square is like, really, when it comes, it's like you could call that fisticuffs, kind of like a, in the Senate. Um, and that can bring violence and that can bring outbursts. And Mars is still conjunct the sun. So this makes this time period very, very difficult. So I'm going to say that we have some uh, intense energies. And if you're energy sensitive, like so many of you are, you know, just remember like, Mars is the gas of a car. Saturn is like the brake of a car and they're going at the same force. And that, that force of the brake and the gas brings a lot of vibration to this planet. And it can bring war and can bring aggression. And because it's in Scorpio, that could lead to, Scorpio's hidden, things that are hidden. 
and it could bring secret things and hidden things that come out. So this could be a very, will be a very intense time, I believe, in the next several, several days that we have here. So the best thing to do is be kind, be compassionate, and probably go inward a lot during these times if you can. You know, if you feel like you're going to get triggered by something, you know, really kind of monitor yourself. This is, and people will get triggered. There's every side of this coin will get triggered here. But just remember what I'm saying, you know, try to have a lot of compassion for everything if you can. Okay. So that's what's going on around the world. So let's, let me answer some of these questions because um, there were great questions. And I'm going to start with this one. Heather from North Carolina. Oh, I, I think that it says NC. Hi, Kelly. Hope you're doing well. I am. Thank you. The last two visits I had with my sister, she brought my mom along as well. I don't speak to my mom, nor did I in my in the dream. So I'm assuming that both mother and sister passed. Um, and you said in this dream that your sister talked. But why did she bring your mom? Oh, I will tell you this, Heather, for peace, for understanding, for um, opening the door, for forgiveness. It does happen on the other side. They often will ask for forgiveness. And especially if there's been a real uh, not a family that has not connected, you know, they'll try and, you know, to see where you are with this. And maybe today or last night or this week, you didn't want to do it. But something might happen where you might all of a sudden start to open your heart. And maybe look at maybe look at your mother's background. Um, did she come from trauma? That's often a good lens to look at it. You know, but it sounds like you and your sister are talking and she brought your mom. So <laughs> and during this period and I got this question um, earlier today, too. And this is from Renee Went. And Renee, I love this question and it kind of piggybacks on this one. Renee said, I've been having a lot of dreams recently about loved ones who have passed away. Is there something going on that this is happening more recently and more often? Yes. Well, you know, when we we're close to the veil, these as the days, you know, get shorter and they get darker earlier and they we get to the winter solstice, these are deep days. And I feel that the souls on the other side, it's easier to communicate with them. And they do come in um, looking to talk to you about if there were things like an apology was was needed. And she said that the last dream that she had was my stepfather who had schizophrenia. And he was apologizing for not listening to me more in, in this dream, she says. I told him I reg in the dream, she said, I told him I regret not talking to him more and being more compassionate about his mental illness. Thank you for your insight. I love that, Renee. I love that so much because we have to look at mental illness. It's, it's, it is something that requires compassion for somebody. Okay, and schizophrenia is a large one. And the, he now, when we lose the body, when we pass away, we're we don't have the body. The schizophrenia is not held in the in the in the bodies. I mean, when you're alive, it is, but when you're past, it's you're not schizophrenic. Um, you don't take that with you, and so it's up there with you know. You don't take um, uh, any kind of delusional thing with you either. You don't take. Um, uh, it, just gosh, so, I mean, you just don't take that kind of stuff with you. You are on the other side. And so when you're on the other side, you can look at your life review and, you know, why was schizophrenia chosen with that soul? Was he here to show others compassion? What was he learning from it? Was he learning compassion for himself? You know, did so I think that question and that you had, you know, said to him, I, you know, that I wish I had spoken to you more and had been more compassionate. I love that. And that's something that everybody can do going forward. You know, if you know people with mental illness, that is not an easy one. It's not, but it really is to shake everybody up to bring compassion. Okay. And I've known many people um, with schizophrenia. It's a tough one, really tough one. Okay. I always think that they're uh, extremely psychic, actually. So here's another question. This is from Elizabeth Preston. Hi, Elizabeth. And this is a really interesting question. She says, I have a question for tonight on crystals. Is there a difference in vibration between a lab-made crystal versus a crystal that's mined? 
And she goes on to say, I understand that there are certain crystals that are solely made in a lab. And she does uh, talk about diamonds. Is there a vibrational difference between a mined diamond and a lab made diamond? And here are my thoughts. Um, if I just talk about diamonds, I mean, you have to look at, are they ethically sourced? I think that's really, really important here. And I really feel that the definition of a crystal is something that is a solid substance, you know, whose molecules are arranged in a highly ordered, repeated pattern. And to me, lab crystals don't have, they're energetically, I don't even know how to say this, you know, they don't have it energetically. I don't believe that. And I believe that they, the crystals that have been in earth, underground, uh, that they've been, you know, they, that their vibrations are increasing. And for me, it's like an ancient system. You know, it's been refined forever. And I, so for me, I believe that uh, lab created stones don't have the same at all, anywhere near the vibration. I think that like I have a piece of aura quartz and I think that's really pretty, but I don't go with it with energy. Like certain things that are made in the lab, I might say, oh, that's so pretty. But uh, I don't think that they have at all anywhere near the kind of energy. No way. So I hope that helps. Um, Tippy Landis. Great question, Tippy. She says, when is your book coming out? Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to say spring. I'm just going to say spring. OK, Tippy, I wish sooner. But here we go. Okay, so and I have so I have so many questions. Uh, Bernadette Desir, she says, "Hi Kelly, can I please get guidance from my guides and adoptive mom about my podcast called the Unleashing Potentials Podcast?" I'm going to say, "Go for it, girl." I think that this is a it's a great thing and a fun thing for you to do, and a cre and it's will probably bring a lot of help to you and to others. And you are uh, February 26th, which is a Queen of Clubs, which is all about uh, knowledge and education and teaching and psychic ability. So you go, you go for it. I think that's a great one for you. I think it's a super one. Um, so here's a question from Rick East. Hi, Rick. He said, hi, Kelly. What is love really? <laughs> oh, just a little question, Rick. <laughs> we watched the movie After Death, which I have not seen that movie yet uh, because where I live, we really don't have movie theaters. But I think it's only at a theater because I tried to watch it online and it wasn't available yet. Uh, anyway, he said, we watched the movie After Death where people described what happened during a near-death experience. One consistent description was the existence of pure love, but no one defined what that really meant. Is it a feeling? Is it a state of being? Is it an outlook on the universe? I love that you ask these questions, Rick. Can you describe love in the context of these near-death experiences? Yes. So I've had. I had a near-death experience when I was three, and I remember like it was yesterday. I talk about that in my book. I also saw my spirit guides that came through to me with my physical eyes when they, they materialized. And um, all I felt, felt is the word, was this incredible love. Uh, that's the only way from a near-death experience incredible love it's a feeling that is that's probably indescribable but it's a feeling okay that is you're surrounded by the most kindest compassion i don't even think we have words for it kind compassion um completeness it's just i hope that can help describe it it's a feeling actually for me it was a feeling um, it's a state of being for sure. And I, and it was unconditional, just unconditional love, just so um, over empowered with this unconditional love. I, you know, it's very different. It's not romantic love. Romantic love is nothing like this. Okay. And although romantic love is, is wonderful, it's not anything like this. This is, it's other otherworldly. It's hard to explain. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, and it is, it's probably not describable. It's unbelievable. Anyway, okay. Uh, but thank you for that question, Rick. I really, really appreciate it. So 
Uh, and this next question is from Carrie East. She says, hi, Kelly. I hope you're continuing to feel better. I am. Thank you. And Don and I, her question today is, how does free will on the other side work? In other words, if someone after their life review, they don't have the desire or the belief that change for their own growth is needed, where do they end up? She said, if counseling was always refused in life because their problems were always caused by someone else, responsibility was never taken for their hurtful words or action, what becomes of such a person? Are they stuck in limbo if they refuse counseling on the other side? <laughs> They're back here on earth. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? You don't want any help? Oh, that's okay. Come on. We got a place for you. Come on. It's called earth. Here you go. Back to school again. Get your ass kicked a few more times. I don't mean to laugh about that, but it is, it's a great question. So what happens is you will do a life review. Let's say there are people like that. And really, honey, what you're describing is a personality disorder. I mean, a narcissist or, or some such like a personality disorder. And um, remember how Rick just asked that question about this unbelievable love, this unconditional love on the other side. When you're in that situation of this unconditional love, and you are doing a life review, there's no um, judgment. You are judging it. So you're watching your own behavior. And if your behavior is a constant blowhard narcissist, constant, 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 and there's nothing wrong with me, it's you, then your guides and you will have a discussion about that. So what do you think that you can do better? Do you think that you could do better with this? Because here's the, the thing. On the other side, you've heard that expression, my father has many mansions or something like that. It, your vibration on earth is constantly growing and you want it to grow. That's why, you know, these questions are so great because you want to learn what you can and, um, and grow, your, uh, grow your, your soul is growing here. Your, you know, your consciousness is shifting here. And what happens on the other side is we continue to grow and grow and grow also. So the more we grow, the higher we will evolve, the higher and more places we will be able to go. And if you haven't done the work, whether it's on earth or whether it's on that side, you don't get a pass to go to the next, <laughs> to go in a higher realm. Because in the higher realms, it's even more love and more things until you actually, and you can't fake it. It's not a fakey thing. You have to be very, um, just an honest and true soul here. And so I hope that answers the question. So will they be coming back to earth or some other place that they would be able to learn, you know, to be nice in the sandbox, you know, don't throw sand and to take responsibility. I think that's, um, and also I view it as how old is this soul? Is this a young soul? Is this a bit, you expect it with young souls on some level. Uh, is it a medium age soul? Is it, how old is this soul? So I think they take everything into consideration and the guides say, you're out <laughs> next, you're gonna go, you gotta make another trip. <laughs> So do the best you can so you don't have to do that. <laughs> That's the way that I would view that. Um, <laughs> and I really mean that. Because Earth is difficult, as I think a lot of us know here. Um, Anne-Marie Milne, she says, Hi, Kelly. Her birthday is 1222, and that makes her a nine of hearts. She said, I'm very intuitive, and I'm a sensitive human being. She said, there's a lot of things I'm feeling right now. Is there a lot of people... She said, I guess there's a lot of people every night that I'm just wondering if there's certain things that I can say to my spirit guides, like my son who's on the other side and the, my father-in-law is on the other side. I think she's, I think your question is, you're wondering how, either how to meditate or how to contact with them. And I, so honey, this is thing. She said, I sometimes doubt myself and think maybe that's just your mind. But here's the thing, and everybody can do this really go into a deep place of meditation. I sound like a broken record when I say that, but to me, it's everything. And just get going and maybe doing a guided meditation even would help you 
with connecting to your guides, help you connecting to the other side, to your son and to your father-in-law. They're always around. It doesn't mean that you hear them the way I'm talking to you right now. I don't even hear them that way every once in a while. But for me, it's, I'll get a picture or I'll hear. I'm a very really clear audience. So I do hear a lot. Um, but it just takes time to develop all of that, okay? So Karen Abercrombie says, my mother-in-law is in transition. Please, can I have an angel card for her? Yes. So what I did, Karen, is I took out these cards. And these are, um, these are I like, used to love these cards. Uh, I don't really care for her anymore, but I love these Archangel Oracle cards. So let's give these a go and see what card is for your mother-in-law who's in transition right now. And there's a lot of people that'll be in transition right now. Let's see. And her, it is beloved one, Archangel Shamiel. I am helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. So whatever, however she is, um, her, her loved ones on the other side are waiting to bring her in. Okay. Just remember that you're never alone when you pass. It is not possible. It, honestly, it's just not possible to be alone. When we do that. Okay. Hi, Vicki. I'm going to get you a card from your beloved husband from Talking to Heaven. I love these cards. These are great cards. And these are James's Van Krog's cards, which I love. Talking to Heaven. And I think he's feeling a little better today. So I'm happy about that. And it is. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? We will be together again. <laughs> I love the water there, Vicki. I think that's very important here. Um, I love that about, about him. Um, Michelle Cavanaugh. Hi there from Readings, Pennsylvania on a roller coaster. It has been a ro roller coaster, hasn't it? Um, it has just been something else this time period. It is something else here. Um, Let's see here. So, oh, Amy says, hi, Kelly. Lulu, I've been thinking about her. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, honey. I appreciate all the, the good the good news about Lulu. I tell you, what a thing. Hi, Francis. Colon, how I hope you're, I know you're doing mediumship too. I think that's going to be great for you and people that started mediumship too. It really takes your mediumship to another level if, if you are so inclined to be doing that. So this is a great question. And this is from Anne Gab. And Anne, I appreciated this question. Excuse me. Okay, she said, are people born with borderline personality disorder or can they develop it through the difficulties that they experience in life? Great question. So first let me explain what borderline personality disorder is because it's a complex condition. But we've all experienced them, I assure you. Um, it really affects, borderline personality affects how a person feels about themselves, okay, and, and others, I could say. And it's characterized by intense, unstable emotions and relationships, as well as insecurity and self-doubt. So borderline personality disorder makes everything about a person feel unstable. And that could be ranging from moods, big mood swings thinking, the way they think, their behavior, it's usually out of control. Uh, the relationships, usually they their relationships are very brief. It's hard for them to continue with people because people you know, blow up. They blow up at people and people have to leave them. Um, and it's it's they say that it's like for a borderline personality person that has this, they feel like they have some exposed nerve or something that um and anything can trigger them like any small thing can be a trick it, uh, you know triggered by them so that's borderline personality disorder they make you know everything's black or white you're either good you're bad it's on a continuum if we start with narcissism then borderline personality disorder sociopath psychopath i mean that's that continuum so borderline is they are the ones that just rage out of control Okay, so I hope I've explained that well enough. Um, so here's the thing. And the question is, do they develop it? Are they born with it? Or do they uh, have, you know, how do they, how does this happen? Or do they develop it? So it is possible that there's a combination of factors here involved and genetics may make you more vulnerable to it. Um, if you had somebody in your family who had huge traumas, it always, to me, comes back to trauma. If somebody in the family 
maybe that person is playing out the borderline personality disorder, but somebody in a, you know, a grandmother had it or a great grandmother had it, or that could be the genetic piece. Or, you know, sometimes there's no genetic piece and there's almost no understanding of how this happens. That's how uh, complicated that is. So I always have a lot of compassion for borderline personality disorder. And, but the biggest thing I have are called boundaries. And with somebody with that, you have to have the strongest of boundaries. You can be, you can send them love. You can be compassionate for what they've gone through, but boundaries are everything. And I find that they learn the best when somebody sets a strong boundary. Okay. And that's what, to me, that's where they, they learn the most. So that's, I hope I answered that um, for you enough. So, cause that's, that's such a tough one. And again, that goes with mental illness. It's just a tough, and a lot of that comes from trauma. You know, trauma is, ugh, it's just another one. It is just another, another thing. We, in earth, when we come to earth, we are going to have trauma. You know, it's just what we're going to do here. Um, Abby Arbenessa, Arben she says three, nine, anything you can pick up. So, March 9th is an Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades comes to deal with the mundane world and the spiritual world. It's like you have to be able to have both in this. And you have to be able to understand spiritual concepts because the Ace of Spades is somebody that I always say was born into the deepest part of the ocean. Um, comes in with a big challenge in life. You know, um, really what to learn a lot of depth in life and to really have um, understand spirituality. But, so sometimes they get really caught up in the fame and money and all that um, when in actuality they need to be on the spiritual end of it. So I hope that helps. Hi, Kelly Burton. She says, hi, Kelly from <laughs> Kelly in Vancouver. Hi there, honey. OK, Terry Camoli says, hi, Kelly. I was thinking today that I haven't seen any signs from loved ones in a while. And as I left the store, I found a dime next to my car door. Not sure who it was. May I have a reading? Thank you. Yes. And you're a six of diamonds. Your birthday is April 15th. That's a six of diamonds. And I actually love that all of a sudden you found a dime. So I'm not sure who passed. Did your mother pass? Did your father pass? I'm not sure. But whoever would have passed, um, trying to get your attention. Often we will find signs. And by the way, they, we get signs all the time. We may not pay attention to them or... Who knows? I, I don't know. We may not just be paying attention to them, but believe me, they are there. And sometimes, we, you know, our lives get busy and we just don't look. But always, I, you know, always kind of be on the scout for that because I think it's, I think it's important, you know. Okay, so this question is from Yolanda Melendez Sneed. And I love this question. And her birthday is August 2nd. And August 2nd is a Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds has a lot of energy and is very creative. She said, I want to do energy work and I want to build my gift connecting to spirit guides. Okay. She said, why do I struggle so much with discipline to do the work? I take medication for ADD, but it saddens me that I still struggle with discipline and discipline is your word. So I was diagnosed ADD. ADD is attention deficit disorder. You've heard of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. To me, there was never a disorder of, uh, attention. It was always, it's actually too much attention that comes in. So, and I don't like the word discipline because that sounds like a left brain word. And I hate that word. Um, actually. So I, somebody who's ADD or I'm going to use the term right brain, um, who struggles to fit into said mold of discipline, it makes it hard to do. I mean, my mom used to go, Kelly, here's the box, stay in the box. I'm like, I don't see the box mom like i'll do my best you know but and and i spent years of sadness with it it is a superpower i want you yolanda to be so happy that you have this because as far as discipline we have the ability to hyper focus so if you're interested in something like for instance if you are really interested in doing your work do it your way okay you don't have to do it anybody's way, but your way. Don't let a left brain person tell you how to do the discipline of it. Okay. Just if, if, if you're an ADD person is, if we are interested in something, we will, I mean, I literally 
when I when I hyper focus, I mean, I've said the story before. I mean, I walked into a bank robber, a bank robbery once, literally in um, Los Angeles. There was a bank robbery going on. I was so hyper focused in getting done what I had to do. I didn't even see that the place was being robbed and the bad guys were there with guns and holding people. I didn't even see it because I just wanted to get into the bank and get it out of the bank. <laughs> so I know. And, you know, sometimes like if I'm, oh my gosh, I mean, Don gets pretty upset because let's say I'm cooking and then I go, oh, I'm going to go do something else. Oh, I, and I get so focused on what I'm doing, you know, I could burn the house down. So I've had to really watch and pay attention to this uh, <laughs> superpower. <laughs> but and read all the books on it too. There are a lot of great books on attention deficit. And in psychology, we don't call it attention deficit anymore. I forget what they call it, but that's to me kind of standard of what it is. But anyway, hi, Karen. How are you doing, Karen Martin? Hi, and you are 7 7. So July 7 is an eight of diamonds. An eight of diamonds always have a beautiful smile. They always have a beautiful smile. Very, very um, intuitive. They've not had it easy on earth and they're always creative and they're always here. At some point in their life, they will have always helped and helped and helped and helped and helped. And I know, uh, Karen, that would be you because I know you have. And let's get you a card from the other side, Karen, okay? Let's just do that. Let's get this. I know you've had a lot of loss, honey. I am learning over here, and I'm going to say that's from your son. I'm learning over here. Okay, Karen. So there you go. Uh, Karen Gasparini Martin says, hi, Kelly. When are things going to settle down next year? No, no, I don't think so at all. I do not think things are going to settle down. No, because we have a major, major uh, eclipse that goes right through the United States. And it's a doozy. Um, and no, things are not going to settle down. Good question. But no, I don't see it happening. I don't see things settling down for a f <laughs> in my lifetime. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, a few years is what I'm going to say. But again, we all wanted to be there for this. Carrie East, she says, yes, we have a Boston Terrier who freaks out at the smallest changes. Thank you, Carrie. I so appreciate that. She will not walk through an open door if it's not open wide enough for her liking. Okay. We have the same dog. I'm telling you, except Otis is this massive, huge, if anybody knows a Briard, they are some dogs. Um, anyway, but thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Sherry Abdu. Hi, Kelly. Someone I love dearly is struggling with OCD badly. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. It is a really rough one. Now, she said it's increased since COVID. I've heard that, honey, about people um, with COVID that it, there were since COVID that it has increased. Is this part of her soul plan? Yes, it's very painful to witness. And I would say, yes, now here's the thing. Does it come from what trauma does it come from? Is she carrying uh, parents? Which, which, where did this come from? I mean, as a therapist, I'd want to know which one in her family did this. What happened? Um, is her brain chemistry off? It has a lot to do with brain chemistry. And I, I often referred people to Dr. Amen, A-M-E-N, uh, for this. And he's got um, clinics all over, Dr. Daniel Amen, A-M-E-N. And he's got clinics all over. And usually the OCD, now is it an OCD? There's also OCD personality disorder. So there's OCD, obsessive compulsive. They're the ones that maybe wash their hands over and over because they're afraid they're going to get something. Um, that's kind of typical. Or the ones that check the stove a hundred times before they leave, you know. And um, that's, but then there's a personality disorder too. So, which is, makes it re like almost impossible to recover from. So it's, it's part of the soul's growth. Yeah, the soul is growing from this. It is very painful to witness. And I would hope that she would get on medication actually and see a therapist. Both that I think actually requires it. There are homeopathic, um, great homeopathic um, remedies that work, that help too. So, I mean, there's help for that. There is help for that. It doesn't have to be that way. But thank you for, um, you know, 
out that. Renee Hansel says, oh boy, hidden stuff coming out of the Thanksgiving table. So let's talk about that, Renee. Right on. Thank you for mentioning that. And yes, Thanksgiving. So, you know, like <laughs> first we had COVID, you know, then we had all the stuff going on with that. And then we had, oh, even long, what am I saying? Before that, we had all the political stuff, which we still have. So that would have cost, I mean, has anybody ever watched that Saturday Night Live where they go through all the political stuff and then all the COVID stuff? And it was, it's so true and hilarious and not funny, but really hilarious. But now we have, you know, this whole other thing that'll pop up, you know, um, with, you know, politically that can happen too. So we've got so many things that are going to crack us all open. Friends might think a certain thing about Israel. Somebody might think this about Palestine. And it's like, oh, it's going to be like, oh, here we go again. So what do you do around the Thanksgiving table? You drink. That's what I'm planning on doing. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, Justine Stanger Kowal. She said, hi, Kelly. I absolutely love your show. Do you have any messages from my dear Oma? Today, it's been five years since she passed. I had a very deep bond with her and I miss her terribly. And you are 724. And 724 is a four of clubs like me. And oh, Justine, I was so close with my grandmother. Oh my gosh. I'm so close with my grandma. So let's get you a card from her. You have nothing to feel guilty about. So I don't know if you felt bad when she passed or any of that. And, and you know, just for the record, they don't want us to feel guilty about anything. They don't. When, again, going back to the question that Rick East asked, great question about love. There is such love and understanding and compassion and wisdom there. It is not like on earth here. On earth, there's all kinds of crap, you know, judgments and criticism and blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. On that side, they don't have that. They don't have it. It's just love there. And so because of all the love, there's great healing per each soul. And when the soul goes on that side, depending on what happened to said soul, whatever happened, they would be with um, their guides, could be a therapist, could be a, somebody that helps, a souls that help them through to release a lot of the traumas that they had or the, all, all the traumas that they had, you know, so we don't carry that with us. So I hope that that helps. Okay. So this is from Renee Hounsel. Hi, Renee. She says, beautiful blessings, Kelly. I have a question. I've noticed after connecting with spirit that everything has a sound, the trees, the grass, and even the sun rays, it feels like the sound of life. She said, have I ever experienced that? And yes, I know exactly what you're saying. I would call it, um, for me, it's a vibration. But I do understand that sound you're describing. If you get really, really still and you feel the vibration of it, you can hear some sort of the sound of life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I love that. Yeah. And I mean that you really have to be very still and it's called being one with the, with the universe being one. We're all one. You're all connected. It sounds Renee, like you're really connecting. So that is, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Honey. Um, that's real spiritual growth there. Really. Um, Jen Chris says, hi Kelly. When my mom passed away, this is a tough one. Everybody. She said, I had to take some of her cats to the pound because we couldn't find homes for all of them. She said, I felt so guilty and I cried when I had to do that. She said, I asked for forgiveness. Is it something I'm trying to get rid of? I had a dream. I talked to her on the phone, my mom on the phone. We had a pleasant conversation and we both said, I love you in the end. I can't remember any of the talk, but I woke up feeling better. Do you think she forgives me? I say a prayer every day for the animals that I had to take. I hope they forgive me as well. First of all, yes, 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 yes. A million times. Yes, Jen. They absolutely, absolutely. You did what you had to do, honey. And I have chills. Your mom totally forgives, forgives you. It's not even a question. You know, I want you to view this in a different way. Those animals, those cats that had to go to the pound, they're going to be able to help other souls. Okay, so the pound was a place that they will be chosen to go and to be with other people where they can help. 
okay? And that would have been what their karma came in to do, okay, honey? So please don't feel guilty about that. You know, I mean, God bless you for doing that, really. That's, I know that, that kind of pain, but um, your mom absolutely understands, sweetheart, okay? So Angie Heidemann, she says, and your birthday is April 22. Hi, Angie. How are you, honey? April 22, Queen of Clubs. Oh, that's right. How could I forget Queen of Clubs? Queen of Clubs, somebody that is always got, has an amazing mind, very creative, uh, very psychic. She said, since moving away from my 30 plus year friendships to another state two years ago, it's been really hard to make new, deeper connections with women here. I'm really pretty lonely, but I totally cover that up when I go to exercise class. I think it must be harder when you're older. Any advice for someone lonely in the Lone Star State? <laughs> Am I not able to connect? Oh, no, Queen of Clubs. You can connect. You can connect, Angie. Oh, my God. Ask somebody to go have lunch with you. Now, just ask away. Ask somebody to have lunch. Ask, take an art class. Find something that you love to do. and then. I mean, I've met some of the greatest people in my life in my 60s, honest to God. And um, I love that. And when you get older, you have more wisdom and you, you can pick, you pick people that you gravitate towards. So that's a good thing. And I know, listen, I moved out here in the middle of nowhere. And um, I, it's funny, I have met people. I don't really spend a lot of time with any of them out here. Uh, I do with Carissa. But um, I've met other people that, of like minds, actually, I was amazed that I really actually like. Uh, and I moved, as you know, born and raised in L.A. So you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And actually, Carissa and I, we are going to go, I'm so excited, on Saturday to a rock and mineral uh, fair that they have in Madison. And I am so excited. So when people say, where do you get crystals? I would be going, look online to find where you live. Um, they're called like rock and mineral shows or rock and gem shows. So much fun. I love to do that. And I love Carissa because she goes with me on these kind of adventures. So that's really, really fun for me. Um, hi, Charlene. How you doing? Charlene, my dearest friend. How you doing, honey? Um, let's see. Okay. Vincy Sawyers, she said, me, I'm 514 and your husband is 1226. So 514, May 14 is a five of diamonds and your husband is December 26. And that makes him a five of hearts. Should know that by heart. A five of hearts. My two intuition and psychic ability have been spot on. The last two days, I am not wrong. Okay. I feel the energy pause and flow. However, tonight I just needed to reset. My dreams are helping me and I feel protected by my parents and sisters who have passed. All right, great. I mean, always when we are using our intuition, our psychic ability, we always need to reset and rest and kind of gather things in. I spent, I, I only work three days a week because I have to go in and reset my energy and I need to, you know, just be able to ponder and do creative things and um, reset my energy. I mean, I think that's, that's good. Sarah Stone, she said, that's good to know. My dad was a paranoid schizophrenic. That is a rough one, Sarah. But always, it is a good thing to know. Compassion is everything. And on the other side, when you meet with them, it's not going to be there. Um, believe me, it's not there. So um, our eight of clubs and eight of diamonds, Julie Memcher says, are they compatible? Yes. Now just remember this. They would be eights are powerhouses. Anytime you see me say eight of anything, eights are powerhouses. Eight of clubs is powerhouse in knowledge and psychic ability. And eight of diamonds is equal the same. Equal. I mean, they are they are about value. So they value different things, but equal power and I would say, yes, they get along. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do. I love eights. Truly do. Um, so, okay. Cheryl Nader Bynum. She said, 124 is my birth date. Well, when will I finally be able to move? I've been trying for years. Endless things prevented. I know I've been here for a purpose. I'm so tired. So January 24th is a three of diamonds. <coughs> Excuse me. Three of diamonds has a rough way to go 
here's the thing about a three of diamonds. You must take a spiritual road. Okay. No matter what, would you be able to move? I mean, I can understand that with the three of diamonds, things would get in their way all the time. And yeah, I would say you will definitely move. I know you're tired, Cheryl, but don't give up. You know, if you want to move, move. There you go. Um, Bernadette Desir, she said, I have schizophrenia. I'm a complete different person. I'm told I'm smarter. I believe that that is right at the brain, right? That piece of the brain that makes them brilliant, actually, Bernadette. I've always thought that. Always thought that. Um, always, always thought that. Oh, yeah. Natural, I'm sorry, I'm so far back. Natural, to me, natural, the natural um, stones have all the energy. Okay. Definitely answer that. Let me see. What else was I supposed to answer on this? Okay, good. I think I got to all of those. Um, okay, wait a minute. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Don't forget Betty Morris Scott, Elizabeth Scott, if you're looking for a good, a great therapist uh, in New York, please look her up. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Patty Weeks. Love when taking pictures of orbs. Love consumes me. Oh, how great, Patty. I think that's great. And your, your pictures are extraordinary. I think that's great. Okay. Michelle D. Felice. She said, question, my cameras are capturing hundreds of orbs going through the house. Why? At some point, it's very heavy, like snow coming down. Wow, Michelle. I mean, my question would be who passed away? Uh, who's trying to reach you? I think that's extraordinary. Truly think that's extraordinary. Wow. I, and I've heard this from a lot of people, especially nowadays. I think that's amazing. Um, Crystal Cook, when I was born, my mom had a near-death experience. She spoke of the same love. It feels that makes our bond very special. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that kind of love with a near-death experience when you're on the other side, it's, it's just unbelievable. I think it's, it's unbelievable. It's incredible, actually. Um, okay, Sheila McCormick. Hi, Kelly. My mother had dementia for the last three years. She passed three months ago. During this time, I started having anxiety and panic attacks. It's just this just from grief and will they go away? Thanks. Sheila, that's very common, honey. It's yes, they will go away. So here's a few things I want to say. Thank you for writing, Sheila. It's really important here. So your mother had dementia for the last three years, which would have thrown you, especially if you were close to your mother, if you were taking care of your mother or if now, because when somebody has dementia, you're watching the person that you had loved now, you know, go through, uh, they're not the same. They're not the same. And they're not that strong person they were, or they weren't that, you know, together person. So you're watching this happen. And if you were close to her, and then she passes, and at that time, it, it absolutely could cause panic and grief. So during grief like this, you can have anxiety, absolutely. Panic attacks, absolutely. So here's what I would do, Sheila. I would, I don't know where you're located, but I would see a therapist. I would have a few sessions, honey, okay? Because, and even a somatic therapist, would probably be really great for you. Somebody that understands trauma in the body because it's, it's tra traumatic. And um, did your mother calm you down when she was alive? Did she, her energy calm you down? Often that is the case. I and mean, my mother was always the one that would calm me down. And while she was dying and I had several years of that, I became the caregiver. And then I was able to, um, when she passed, I did not have anxiety. Doesn't mean that I could I could have as she had died earlier on. I don't know how old you are, Shirt Sheila, but I could have. So thank you for that question. It will go away. Okay? It will go away, honey. It's grief. Grief's a funny thing, isn't it? I mean, it's just a a tough. Okay, Gaila Pulio. What about prayer? Do you believe in the power of prayer? I do, Gail. I pray all the time. I do. I like candles. I pray. Um I meditation to me is different than prayer. Meditation is when I just get very silent and I, I listen and prayer is when I'm talking to God constantly, uh, constantly. Yes. I very much so believe in that very much. So, um, I hope that helps. Okay. Ellie, I needed to speak to my mother. So I pulled a card 
talking to heaven. She told me that she is experiencing love that she never felt before. Her life was so sad. This gives me peace. Okay, Ellie, I love, love, love that. That is so true. On the other side, so while they're here on earth, some people may never experience um, love here. Some people only come to experience love. Some people come not to experience love. Some people have, everybody has their own thing, what they've come here to experience. Everybody's different. Uh, they have all kinds of different reasons why they come here. But on the other side, when we are there, that is complete love. Again, Rick, great question. You knocked it out of the park with that question about love because on the other side, they are feeling that. So um, I hope that does give you peace, Ellie. I think that is is so great. Okay. Um, wow. El Emily, uh, Emily Louise. Hi, Kelly. Warmest holiday wishes to you. Thank you, honey. You too. Thank you for your spirit. You are welcome. What are your thoughts with the treatment modality EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing? <laughs> I always have trouble with that one. I, I like EMDR. It's not my favorite is somatic therapy, but EMDR works really well too. Um, it's sudden eye movement. So they're getting you to move your Move your eyes, you're following. You're, sometimes it goes into tapping. It, it all depends. But um, EMDR is, is good. It's a good form of, tr of trauma work. I also love Peter Levine's somatic experience of trauma that's also stuck in the body and how, um, how that process works. I've had it all. <laughs> Ask me, I've had it all. And, um, but I love trauma work, okay? I love trauma work. I was watching that unbelievable documentary that James and I were talking about, uh, the Twin Flames Universe on Netflix. And one of the most absurd things I heard, it was absurd. This woman said, well, we we freeze the trauma and, and then make it go away. I'm like, these people are just, I mean, that's dangerous. I mean, lunatics. Um, Oh boy. But if you haven't seen that one, that is some, some show. Okay. Mark Brevard. Hi, Mark. How are you, honey? Your birthday is coming up on 1127. And you know what, Mark? On that day, there's a full moon that day. There is a full moon. I'm looking at my schedule. Now it's a very powerful day also because there's also the full moon is squaring Saturn. However, it is a full moon day for you. And I think that's going to be amazing. So let's get a card for your mom. And 1127 is a six of hearts. Six of hearts. That's right. Which is always, we call that, that's always one of my favorite, favorite, favorite cards. It's all about faith. Believe in yourself. You can do it. And that's from your mom. Believe in yourself. You can do it, honey. And I know that. Anyway, so take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Ask Me Anything. We hope our discussions with Kelly White and James Van Prague have enriched your spiritual understanding and personal growth. From recognizing spiritual elements in children to understanding the subtle energies of crystals, each episode is a treasure trove of wisdom. Missed a live session on Facebook or YouTube? Don't worry. You can always find the latest episodes on your favorite podcast app. Remember, your queries form the heart of our show. So keep those questions coming for the next episode. Before we close, make sure you've subscribed to join us on this enlightening journey. Until next time, Continue to question, explore, and grow. The universe is full of answers awaiting your curiosity. Mm -hmm.